Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I am Ramon Mejia, and I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. And this week I have five new Lit RPG titles just for you folks at home. I'm going to be reviewing Lost in Space, a Lit RPG space opera adventure. Also, Abduction Chronicles. Uh, Abduction Chronicles Gen- Genesis. I should say that it's one word, it's one line. Book one. Also, Towers of Heaven, a Lit RPG adventure, book number two. Uh, after that, it'll be Rise of the Necromancer, which is the third book in this particular series, I think. And also Blasphemy Online Volume 1, Dragon Hack. So there we go. Five new reviews. Before we begin that, we're going to jump into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Little Bitty News, we're going to begin with uh, Fantasy Book Fest. Uh, I want to announce that several Liberty authors will be attending the Fantasy Book Festival from April 17th to the 19th of 2020 in Anaheim, California. The schedule of authors and events is still being formed, but already includes writer and reader panels, um, including Lit RPG panel. So, hey, we're, that's us. We're getting some good traction in some places. Um, Little Bridge authors that are currently attending include James A. Hunter, Apollo Thorne, Domino Finn, and R.A. Mejia. So me. Yeah, this is primarily why I'm talking about it. Uh, basically, folks, if you want to um, meet me or meet any of these other Little authors who are all very great, fun people, maybe you can bring books for them to sign or just hang out. You're also near Disneyland in Anaheim, California. So um, if you're going to hang out, you might as well go see that Magic Kingdom. Uh, but you can purchase your pick tickets at fantasybookfest.com. Again, lots of time in advance. Uh, it's not until April 17th to the 19th of 2020. But of course, you also want to book your rooms. There's a, the, the festival is actually at a hotel um, area with the conference area, I think. So um, it's honestly one of the least expensive places I, I, I can think of that's near Disneyland uh, to get a hotel. I guess it's like a five minute drive to Disneyland too. So um, if, even if you don't want to, you know, go to the festival necessarily want to book a hotel, um, this is a great spot, especially since it's getting a nice big group discount. Um, but I would encourage you of course, to go to the festival, of course, because I'll be there. I'll be here to hang out with you and to, to sign books and to talk about little bitty stuff as well. James A. Hunter, Apollo Stone and Domino Finn. And I think the, you know, us guys are probably going to be doing some fun stuff. Um, I don't know what yet, but they're all fun. So there you go. That's, one bit of lit RPG news and l- other little bit of news. We have a uh, ruined the Majesta book number, no, sorry, volume 2.1 is actually out now, but there were some issues with the pre-order. Apparently the author uploaded the original manuscript. It got kicked back to him and it cut off the pre-order, which was scheduled to come out on the 27th of September, I believe. Instead, the author just re-uploaded it and it's out now. Um, but if you did do, do a pre-order like me, um, it got canceled as did the original, um, landing page for the, for the, for the book. So you're going to have to reorder it or get it on Kindle Unlimited or buy it. I did all three. Um, and to help the book, I actually, um, Taj is nice enough to actually donate, um, five free copies of the book, um, to the first viewer, to the viewers, I should say, who, comment on the webpage or comment on the, on the podcast notes, wherever you can find this and share what you liked about book one. And from those people, uh, we'll do a drawing and we'll give out five free copies of the novel. Uh, well, let's just say one copy to five different people. Um, so please enter, go, go share, help this, uh, indie (laughs) novel uh get some traction and help other people find it by commenting and reviewing and doing all that wonderful stuff that you guys always do to help support our our little bit authors um but again just leave a comment in the show notes here um wherever you're finding it whether it's on facebook or twitter or uh youtube or reddit or wherever um and just list what you liked about the series um Anything you enjoyed the most, and, and we'll take your name. We'll put it in a, in a contest pool, and we'll pick one, you know, five of you folks out. There we go. Okay. Also, in Little Bridge news, uh, and this is probably one of the more exciting pieces of news we've, that we've had. The Michael Scott Earl saga has <laughs> been a roller coaster of events, uh, and the latest update in that is that Michael Scott Earl has finally launched a Kickstarter to fund his next novel that he's publishing. Um, it only took hours, literally like, I think two and a half hours to reach his initial $15,000 goal uh, for an ebook and audiobook and sign physical copies to the entire series of this, this one series for Tamers. Um, as of this recording, however, he has over $44,000 in support for this one 
book project showing that Microsoft Earl does not need Amazon to make money and that they were very foolish uh, to kick him off of their platform because he was making them a ton of money as well. Um, the project has already become one of the most backed fiction products on the platform. Um, and there are some really interesting rewards uh, for, for your pledges, including like regular ebooks, audiobooks, combos, um, physical copies, signed and mail to including entire series of books. Um, and so that's like six, seven books, depending on the series. Um, and, but there are also even like bigger rewards that there was one reward for a thousand dollars, which has already been snagged by one really super generous person. Uh, but there's also a bigger stage of $5,500, uh, that will get you a weekend to hang out with Michael Scott Earl. He would even like host D&D games, whatever you want to do. Um, but for it to $5,500, man, I, I would probably fly to in the country too, to hang out with you. Uh, so there you go. Um, but of course, if you want to check out the project, we'll have a link in the show notes, kickstarter.com. You can look it up. It's in the show notes. Michael Scott Earl, Tamer King. There you go. Uh, but it's a fun bit of news that uh, how this how this particular story has gone. So it's interesting. Uh, on to stuff that is out now. This is stuff that is out and out. No, I haven't read it, but it is out uh, for most of the people who are watching this. Has a, now it's a God of Gnomes, including God, God Core. It didn't record Little BG. That is out now. Also, Ruins Majesta, Volume 2.1. Also out is Resurrection of Adventure, book number one, Duty Rotten Magic, The Return of the Master's Quest, Resurrection of the Masters of a Liberty series. Um, and I think this novel is definitely going for a longest Liberty title uh, award. So I, that's what it looks like to me. Uh, also out, though, is uh, the second book in the Game Makers Online uh, series called Gladiators of Warsong, 100 Halls, Liturgy, and Gamelet Novel. Um, I'll be honest, that cover looks a little BDSM, um, but this series doesn't have uh, sex if I recall. I remember enjoying the first book, so I'll have to try to make a, a place in my long book schedule to see if I can fit that one in. Um, also out though is Tales of Dungeons, um, which is, oddly, this is, there have been very few liturgy um, short story co collections, and this is one of them. This is actually more geared towards uh, Dendrocore novels. It's a whole short story collection of Daniel Carter. Remember Jeffrey Falcon Logue was taking submissions a few months ago and he finally put it together, got it all edited. And here it is volume one of, of this project. Um, Tales of Dungeons. There are actually nine Dungeon Core stories. Some are Little BG, some aren't. Um, so just be aware of that. Not all Dungeon Cores are Little BG. So just be, you know, some are just different. Um, some have real clear RPG progression. Those are the ones I probably like the best. Um, but it does include a story, of course, from Trevor Falcon Low. Also, um, a bunch of essentially fans in the of Dungeon, Dungeon, Dungeon Core novels made submissions, uh, but also um, Stuart Gross. He's also one of the authors. And our very own Ray Johnson uh, from the Liberty Podcast. He got a short story put into this collection. So congrats, man. Uh, we always want to support our, our guys, our people who are a part of the Liberty Podcast family. Um, so go check it out. Definitely go, go read it, go review it, all that good stuff. Okay. In new audiobooks, we have quite a few titles here as well. A Second Chance Invasion series book one. This is the new series set in the Way of the Shaman universe, written by Vasily Panko. It is a new main character, though. Um, it takes place after the events of the Way of the Shaman. So just be aware that, again, this is a new character, new kind of expansion to that universe. But it is an audiobook, as is the first book in the Jin Tamers series, Bronley's Legend, called Starter. Um, people always harass me online when I say Dinjin instead of Jin. So there you go. Uh, also out is Home Sweet Home, the sixth book in the Good Guys series, uh, written by the amazing Eric Ugland. I've enjoyed every single one of these novels. Um, so definitely give it a, a, a listen. Also out as an audiobook is Dungeon World book number three. I'm behind on the series. I, I read number one. I enjoyed it. I haven't gotten to two or three though. So I know plenty of people have really enjoyed this series. So definitely go, go give it a listen if you're a fan of that. Um, also out is Peaks of Power, book number one, um, written by Paul Campbell Jr. It's out as an audiobook. Remember that it was originally published under Mountain Dew Press. Then the author republished it under his own name. And now the audiobook is out under his, uh, his, his name as well, solo. Um, so if you've enjoyed that series or if you've been waiting for it to come as an audiobook, here it is for you. Um, also out is Rexus, uh, 
a side quest novel in the Completionist Chronicle series written by Dakota Crout. It is out. It is so funny. It is really genuinely full of puns and interesting humor. It it it's a good story. It is isn't the main character from from the Completionist Chronicles. It has a, a one of the side characters, but it's it's so entertaining and again it goes on its own original adventure. Has such a great time with it as an ebook. I can only imagine um, how entertaining it's going to be by Luke Daniels. So um, I. I so yeah, there you go. Also out is Endless Fantasy Online, The Phoenix Kingdom. So that is out as an audio, but the ebook just came out recently. So it's good for you guys for getting that audiobook out um, very near the time of your ebook release. Okay, on to upcoming Letter BG. We have on September 27th, Death Mantle. Uh, this is a new addition to this list. Harmon Cooper just sent me the information for it. It'll be out this Friday. Um, so it'll be an interesting story. The author describes it as a gamelet specifically, but I, I did look through it a little bit. And even though it takes a little while to get to some of the game mechanics, um, there is um, RPG progression. It is rather light though. So just be aware of that. Um, it just, it is what it is. So just, I've enjoyed Harm most of Harmon Cooper stuff. Some of it, not always, um, but um, I'm hoping that this one's going to be really good. Um, on September the 30th, it'll be Shadow Sun Rebellion, the third book in the Shadow Sun series. On September 30th, Darkness Found from Darkness Online, book number two. September 30th as well. So many things come on the 30th. It'll be Dark Legacy Transformation, book number three. On September the 30th as well. See, hold you. Called Crafter's Dungeon, a dungeon crafting book number two. Sorry, Crafter's Defense. Uh, sometime in September, uh, September, I hope. It'll be first song book number two. Um, it's getting pretty close to the month, please. I'm definitely waiting to see this pop up at some point. Uh, on October the 1st, it'll be Ferried, uh, the fourth book in the Monster, Mises, and Magic series. On October the 3rd, it'll be Quest for Power, uh, Hero Online book number two. October the 16th, uh, 2019, it'll be Dungeon Knife, a literary short story, Tales from the Gods game, book number one. Uh, on October 17th, it'll be Second Story Man, a uh, second book in the Bad Guy book series. October the 17th, Universe ICS Keymaster, second book in that series. The third book in the NPC's Path series will be out on October 21st called Dead Man's Retinue. The fifth book in Reality Benders. This one I'm actually generally looking forward to. Um, one of my favorite series, sci-fi, liturgy, it's but done really well. Um, a Jump into the Unknown, Rally Benders, book number five, October 23rd. Uh, Sky Realms Online, book number two, called Silver Peaks, will be out on October 29th. The second book in the Varnath series, Black Blade, book number two, will be out on October 31st, 2019. Um, November 1st, 2019, will be A Dark Path, Grim Dark, Letter BG, Forsaken Talents, book number one. Um, November the 1st, this one's new to the list, Rift World Online, book two. Um, this this was a weird cyberpunkish fantasy thing going on there. Um, it, the second book is out. It's going to be out on November the 1st, though. Um, the second book in the World of Karak series out on November the 4th. Remember, this is a re-release of an assist a series that came out a couple years ago. Fully polished, better translation work. Um, definitely looking forward to, to seeing the better version of this. Um, on November the 7th, Avatar of Light, into World Network, book number two. And uh, November the 11th, The Last Time Loop, book number one. November 22nd. Oh, man, this is goes on forever this time. <laughs> Dragonheart Blood Will, the third book in that series, out November 22nd. And uh, December the 9th, Level Up, book number two. Uh, no, so this is a, actually a Level Up update. It's in the Knockout series, which is a co author written between um, Dan Sergalinoff and the Max Larkno. It takes um, the Level Up series. It's set in the Level Up universe, I should say, which is written by Dan Sergalinoff, uh, but it's a, it's a different author, different main character. Um, it's a little more action focused. Um, I enjoyed book number one. Um, but I didn't quite like it as much as the original level up series, but it'll be out on uh, December 9th, the second book in that series. And finally, the end of the upcoming list, uh, the wastes underdog, uh, will be out December 23rd, right around Christmas for you folks. And on to new releases and reviews. And uh, first up this week, we have Lost in Space, a little RPG space opera adventure written by Dimitri Raspanov. It is 317 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Victor Lost, 
Maskinoff is one of the top common competitors in the popular computer game Sky High, uh, Star Sky. Um, he, along with his team, is set to become one of the global champions. But when fame and fortune appear on the horizon, everything begins to fall apart. Everything began to fall apart, I should say. The transfer of Nikita Hig Ostrovsky to the team forces the management to let one of their players go. The lucky one happens to be Victor. He loses his game account and is banned from playing professionally. He looks to his girlfriend for support only to have her leave him for another man. Victor personal and professional lives have come to an end. Meanwhile, an alien force threatens the human population. They have devised a plan to enslave humanity and indenture them to the service of mercenaries used to scout the galaxy, pillaging and murdering on, on their way all while under the guise of playing a computer game. Victor resists, fighting on both fronts as the enemy takes command of her special forces. The deeper he plunges into the conspiracy plot, the more he realizes that cheating and treachery never cease. Okay, there you go. That's the novel description. Um, and again, it's 370 pages, $3.90, that available on Kindle Limited. Totally forgot to do that first. Um, this is a light lit RPG story that focuses more on the conspiracy aspects of the, of the story than the action adventure. And that's what you're mainly interested in. I think you actually enjoy this a little bit more than I did. Um, the story revolves around a main character who has this woe is me start of losing his place on a competitive VR team. Um, he gets a chance to work with the government as a beta tester on a new game. And most of this um, early to mid story is him just going on very poorly described missions. Um, Many of whose actual details get skipped later, fighting aliens and then working his way up to being a pilot with an amazing ship. Now, um, this is one of the things that kind of bugged me about the story. The author would do a, a single mission to describe a type of, of mission, and then he would go on to say, like, after he repeated a similar type, he would just say, Oh, I'm taking this mission type. You'd get some details about like the payout and then a dot, 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 and the rewards as he finished it. You, you wouldn't actually see the mission anymore in between and this game had happening again it was definitely annoying but it also kind of shows you that the emphasis on the story is not the action adventure um so just be aware of that going in um this part of the story is more about him figuring out how to balance his home and work life while maximizing his gaming efforts to do all these missions there's lots of upgrades to his ship and details about the gaming becoming better with better missions and fleshed out gaming universe um and this section of the story like i really actually enjoyed the real life aspect of this novel it was it was much better fleshed out than like the game part. Um, and, and it just was, I, I, I like the fact that he had to make a conscious decision on what he's going to spend his cash on. Um, after that point, the story shifts to one of conspiracy as he gets access to information that changes the way he looks at the game. Um, I won't, well, I don't want to say this anymore. I won't spoil things, but it's a well done aspect that makes up for the poorly described missions that are skipped entirely sometimes. Um, and it is, and it's a nice little twist uh, when it when when it pops up. And it was, wasn't something that I wasn't expecting because I've, I've read enough sci-fi literary stories to kind of see where this was going to go. Um, and the author kind of talks about a little bit of the novel lore, but it was it was it was entertaining. Uh, the RPG aspects in the story are pretty light, um, with levels gained for completing missions and skill points given to specialize. The money and credits awarded for completing missions is actually more important to the story than the experience points. And again, I I. I I say that because it actually has an impact on what the main character does. The, the leveling stuff, he just kind of grinds missions. And that's part of the stuff that I think the author chose to kind of skip in, in describing the different action scenes. Uh, and that it got it by necessity was a little bit of grindy, grinding um, for experience points. Um, but those experience points really just felt a little loose. Like he would complete a mission and be like, oh, you've gained level, 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 level. And he would go spend experience points or going or he would save them initially, uh, which became like his, his end of the story. Um, but the money aspect was always something that was very detailed and that he had a certain amount of money or credits to spend in a game, either on upgrading his, his, his ship and his skills, or he could cash out that money and pay bills. Um, and that was always a more impactful aspect of, of the progression system. I should, I should say, um, other progression aspects like the upgrades and main character, uh, to me, character ship are more important and they're flushed a little more like one of the things i really did enjoy is, is just seeing how he was going to pimp out a ship and to see what kind of um class and build he was going to make for that ship in those fights that was kind of neat um for most of the story i was kind of on the fence on one hand there's a distinct and purposeful lack of detail in the novel and it really feels like there's that's intention intentional that there that there's 
it's definitely like specifically a lack of detail. And part of that is how the game progresses. The game world is being fleshed out as the main character plays it in beta. Um, but also just like the lack of detail for these missions. Like I said, one of the things that kind of bugged me the most was I would have a, a good action scene or like a decent dish action uh, mission. And then again, the main character would kind of go on similar missions and you would skip all the details you would just get like, Oh, this is the quest. This is the, the mission statement. Here's the reward. And then at the end, dot, dot, dot. Oh, look, I won. And I got all this cash. And I'm like, that was just kind of frustrating to me. So I'm like, okay, because again, the other aspects were better fleshed out. Um, see uh however it was still entertaining to see the real life versus gaming aspect go through and i kept waiting for the story's twist to make it worth it and uh, worth the wait some of the story twists did um and they added some nice layers to what was happening in the game however the novel ultimately lost me and it it really just genuinely lost me in the end of at the end of the novel the end is just so frustrating that i just i like i said i was on the fence for most of it was like this definitely kicked me off the fence so i i i this didn't work for me. Um, there's like a really big conflict set up in the beginning of the novel. It's described in the novel description, so I don't have a problem like talking about it. The main character loses his programming slot, right? Um, and without getting too spoiler, he gets a chance to get payback and resolve that conflict. But instead of the resolution being told from his point of view, where you see, oh, um, his feelings, his action, his strategies, you know, like the rest of the novel, um, it that entire section is told from the perspective of some random gaming announcers where they're describing like oh this is the tournament of champions or whatever and they're like this is our, our player and you know that kind of stuff uh and it was just so frustrating um to have this weird perspective shift because it didn't like you, that there's so much missing from like the feelings of what the main character was doing in it even though occasionally I pop back to the main character's point of view it was just i was just like this is it was just so frustrating and not only that there's this last minute twist and i literally mean last like couple percentages of this novel that it just kind of felt like it came out and I, I mean it's sort of hinted at in a couple places but like the twist was just like oh oh that's what you're going to do to me at the very end thank you um and it totally kind of ruined the story for me because it essentially made all the stuff that came before like oh that doesn't matter anymore and it kind of it definitely conflicts with what I thought was being set up. So it was, it was just aggravating in that respect. Um, overall, like I said, for most of the story, I was on the fence between a six and a seven, but the end just pushed me right into six territory. So for me, lost in space, a little bit of space opera adventure gets a score of six out of 10. And next up we have abduction Chronicles, Genesis book. Number one written by Peter John. It is, let's see, 357 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. Colonel Petros Arkansas, retired, is abducted from his comfortable home by aliens, and his life changes forever. The aliens begin experiments on him with tests in harsh computer-generated environments and expect him to survive without modern equipment. The colonel teams up with a core group of spec op operatives to survive, but first, he has to learn what his new situation is, what enhancements he has available in these game-like simulations, and how to ramp them up. He begins a wild adventure of self-discovery, self-enhancement, and in some rare instances, self-awareness. Will he survive the unfamiliar idea of grinding out levels for enhancements, and who will come to his aid? The path he chooses is often dark, filled with fantastical creatures from outlandish beings, and the steps he takes are racked with pain and far less traveled. Along the way, he discovers that humanity's existence is on a knife's edge and the road to salvation lies in his hands. Together with the team, he has to face down some of the scariest horrors in existence. Despite all these obstacles, Petros digs deep into that dogged spec ops persona and meets the road he treads with a hard, determined step and a willingness to run. Will he run away or towards the challenges? So there we go. And the author describes it as a subtle combination of military sci-fi fantasy game lit and little rpg um that and lots of action and intrigue for followers of any of these genres so there you go um and i don't know if it's subtle <laughs> okay um the cover for this novel is it just doesn't do it justice it kind of highlights only one particular aspect the military aspect um and it really 
it doesn't it doesn't do it justice for the sci-fi adventure the action adventure the the fantasy aspects um or the little bridge game aspects so it just doesn't do it justice to to what this actually it's actually quite a bit of good writing but but if i was just judging this book by this cover i, I don't know that i would have picked it up if this wasn't like something i did um so like i said if, if you like any of those aspects after the review definitely give it a chance don't don't judge this by a cover um the in the forward to the novel, the author definitely identifies three genres that the story uses, fantasy, liturgy, and uh, military fiction. And while it's true that the novel hits all three points, um, there's definitely a priority for which is fleshed out the most and matters to the story. Unfortunately, the liturgy sections are the least of the three. The story starts off with the main character being abducted by aliens and ejected with nanites that transform his potential. Um, he finds himself dropped in simulations where he has to survive and reach some locations. Um, this early part of the story is actually entertaining, even though there are game um, aspects to it with like notifications and stuff and nav notifications. There is no early RPG aspects um, that comes a little bit later. But that first survival section is actually really entertaining and kind of shows off the one of the highlights of the story in that there's this uh, military survivalist um, aspect of the story that's just like really well written. Um, and I, 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 from the first few pages after the, the, the abduction stuff is a little wonky. Um, but once you get into the survival stuff, I was like, I was totally on board. Um, and the first 12% of the novel focuses really on well-written survivalism, small doses of game like notifications that are mostly used to convince the main character that he's in a simulation. After that 12% mark is where the RPG stuff comes into play, with the main character finally gaining levels, the ability to increase his stats and skills, and the ability to choose a class. From there, it's a really good bunch of world building as the main character comes to understand the situation he's in, why the aliens have abducted humans to fight for them, um, how to decide which side he's on, and if he's okay to work in the situation he's in. There's actually a lot of really interesting internal dialogue that the main character has with himself, which is why I kind of point this out because it's, it's like I said, a lot of this is really enjoyable. It's just the RPG stuff is not always among them, unfortunately. I'll get into that in a second. Um, there's a lot of good training, there's magical and physical training, as well as clear threat the main character has to oppose. Um, the biggest highlight of the story is definitely the military aspect. Um, if you like military kind of science fiction, I think you'll enjoy this just based on that part alone. Um, from the survival aspect to the commander reaching the inducted military foreign personnel, there's just such rich detail that it's hard not to be impressed. Um, the world building done to create the fantasy universe and the two main factions is rather well done too. There are lots of nice little details and fleshed out moments and stories that I think make, make it really believable this universe exists and these characters exist. However, this is where the novel kind of loses me a little bit. The story loses points with me because of the lit RPG aspects. The RPG elements in the context of the story, they're imposed by an, uh, uh, the abducting aliens as a way for humans to improve themselves. So basically... Um, there is no inherent RPG system in this novel. It's not like he's transported to a fantasy RPG world or anything. He's really just abducted by aliens. He's injected with nanites. And those nanites have this um, inherent program where when he's dropped in the simulations, which are like these almost virtual reality simulations, um, if depending on what he's doing in the simulation and what he's doing to complete the, the quest line or the objective he's given at the end of it, he earns experience points and he can use those experience points to level up and to uh, gain skills and use once he levels, use skill points, and all the good stuff. Right. Um, however, there's an issue with that in that there's, there's really no consistency for certain aspects of, of that RPG progression system. And that's kind of the thing that really threw me. Some are, are nicely designed, um, but some just feel like they don't, matter at our just kind of arbitrary checkpoints for for character growth um for example the main character goes to the beginning simulation and he gets five levels for it at the very end of it, it there's no details about oh you're getting so many experience points for killing this monster or for surviving this trap or for helping this player and like that right and then there's there's an intentional lack of numbers there and i'm and i, I think i'm just i as somebody who's written Letter G, uh, who writes it, I absolutely understand that it's a total hassle to kind of track those numbers uh, and to give them. But because of that, when at the end of the story, the main character is like, oh, it's just, he just gets a huge dump of like, oh, you've level, 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 leveled. That feels less impactful because you don't know what he's getting experience points for, right? It, it, so it, it just feels like, oh, it's completely arbitrary. And that might be a part, 
intentional. It might really genuinely be part of the story in that the aliens are in kind of arbitrarily giving experience and rewards um, depending on what they're trying to train the main character or the humans in, um, which is perfectly understandable. I, I absolutely get that. But it didn't make it feel like those levels were really impactful in the story, especially considering in other places in the story, the main character goes through other simulations and they're less difficult. Yet he gets more levels. He'll get 10 or 20 levels um, doing those simulation sections. And sometimes he'll get rewards for things he's not doing in the simulation. Like he'll step out and he'll step back in. Um, and then suddenly, you know, at the end he's standing 20 levels of experience. And I'm like, but beginning was really hard and he had to fight things and that was challenging. So I get that. But then later on seems super easy um, or at least less challenging. And he's getting even more experience. And I'm like that my gamer brain, no like, and that's really what it felt like sometimes. Um, and so it just kind of felt like the, the experience and levels are completely arbitrary um, and not impactful. So that, that's what it meant for the, the leveling didn't really actually matter to the story. It was kind of just this arbitrary marker, um, that the main character was going to power up and increase his stats and get the surgery to increase those things. That's part of the story. Um, and while that part was important because it, it actually had an actual impact on the story, um, the levels themselves just didn't feel as impactful. And again, that's my, my feelings about it. Um, not to say that that's the author's intention. The other aspects of, of progression felt more impactful. Like he said, he, if the other took out the leveling system, the actual numbers and levels, the story would kind of feel the same. The other aspects of progression felt more impactful. Like the main character um, would get skill increases as he practiced some skills and, or he would get new skills as he learned them. And that those felt more and more impactful. There is a magic system in the story, but it's completely fantasy based. So don't, don't think of that as progression. Um, the main character kind of wills spells into existence or learns incantations and theories from books, but it's definitely not incorporated into the RPG system um, impactfully. There are ways for the main character to apply spell points to level up spell groups, but there, it, there didn't really seem to be an impact for that particular ship. It kind of felt like, oh, he's we should add this in and make sure he has spell points so that it makes sense. Um, overall, while the military and fantasy elements are well thought out and very impactful, some of the RPG stuff is, and that's kind of where it lost me a little bit. I, I, I thought it was an entertaining story, lots of good action adventure. Like I said, the military stuff is like, this is on its own. The military action and camaraderie would get like an eight out of 10 for me just by itself. However, the RPG stuff was, which is less satisfying for me because I, I come to these stories specifically for game mechanics for the RPG stuff, right? And so for me, that part would get like a six out of 10 which is unfortunate. Um, but overall, I'll kind of split the difference because like I said, I really like some aspects of it and some of it was not as enjoyable for me specifically. Um, and I'll give it a 7.4 out of 10. So that's Abduction Chronicles. Um, I had a good time with it, so it was always going to get a 7 at least. Um, and I'm going to split it between the, the great military action stuff and the not amazing RPG stuff sometimes. And again, specifically because the levels feel like they weren't impactful for me. Now the author read the review and he, he kind of noted, he's like, he commented that he didn't feel like it was fair to get Dean for having a light RPG mechanics. And so I want to make sure he's not getting like a deduction for having a light little RPG mechanics. Um, I like little RPG in period. I, whether they're light mechanics or they're, you know, crunchy or hard mechanical lost numbers, but specifically here, it kind of lost me because the leveling felt like it didn't matter to the story. And for me, as somebody who loves game mechanics, who loves that part of little RPG, um, a, a major mechanic and not being impactful, just lessen my enjoyment enough. So it, like I said, still had a good time with it. Um, overall gets again, a score of 7.4 out of 10 for abduction Chronicles Genesis book number one with a score of 7.4 out of 10. And next we have towers of heaven, a little RPG adventure book number two, written by Cameron Milan. It is 234 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Champion of Eros, god of battle, bearer of foreknowledge, a mythical third realm expert. Jason had it all, and yet he still couldn't prevent his father's death. He didn't even have time to grieve as his mission took precedence over all else. Pressing onward was the only path. But did he possess enough strength to clear the tower, even with Roy and Olivia at his back? The obvious the answer was obvious. Only humanity's best could only with humanity's best could he stand a fighting chance. Oh, I messed that up. 
Yes, as his actions influenced the world, the more things changed. Worse, his secret identity index was in the spotlight for releasing knowledge that couldn't possibly be known. If the major powers of the world found him, they'd no doubt use torture to obtain his secrets. A single mistake could cost him everything. He had already gotten a second chance. He won't get a third. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, okay, this is a really short review. Uh, it's an enjoyable sequel. It takes all the things I like about book one and pumps them up. Um, it's a slice of love with action adventure increases as this group goes through multiple levels of the tower. There's a new kingdom building level that was a nice break from the action. Um, but also, I actually like the fact that the main character's foreknowledge is becoming less impactful. Like he has to work a little bit harder or figure things out on the go. He doesn't just automatically have knowledge. You know, I actually like that change in the story. It makes it feel like he has a chance to fail, which is good to me. Um, the novel just kind of flew by. It's a really entertaining story. I, tons of review, positive reviews for her already. So go, go check it out. Towers of Heaven, a little bit of adventure book number two with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. A really quite enjoyable. Okay, next we have Rise of the Necromancer, a little bitty series um, written by Dick Davis. I think this is the third book in the series. It is 255 pages, $2.99. It's available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. Cast spells, have fun, bring back the dead to life. Being a necromancer has its perks. Jacob, uh, Jacob Rousseau recently graduated from the Queen's Academy of Magic. He is a necromancer, a wizard who can bring back the dead to life. And he's still trying to prove himself. Disaster strikes while he and his friends are traveling through a desert, and he wakes up alone in a land where danger lurks in every shadow. Using his necromancy magic and survival grit, he needs to save his friends and get back to safety. Can he pull off this impossible rescue when he finds himself up against a band of not-so-nice slavers, ridiculously giant insects, and an old warrior bear looking for revenge? Well, if a necromancer can't cheat death, nobody can. So there we go. Um, I've actually really enjoyed the first two books in the series um i thought they were fun and interesting they were lighter on the literary or the rpg mechanics um but they're still enjoyable that a really interesting main character who was a necromancer and i thought that um aspect of the story was well thought out well planned and that also had a cultural impact in that in that in the story universe um and a lot of that doesn't exist here uh, in book number three, which is unfortunate the first half of the novel is it feels it almost feels like it's a different series because it is set in such a different um setting the novel kind of starts over with the main character fleeing his home country with a desert caravan and the beginning portion of the story like a good portion of it is, isn't even told from the main character's point of view it's told from the pr different perspective and that's another thing that kind of shifts in the story and that you have this multi-perspective point of view thing where where the it's told from character perspective that don't really matter or that they don't know um and only after like this huge dust storm section of the novel where the main character gets separated from the group, do you actually get to see his particular point of view, which I thought was just a little bit distracting um, because I came for the main character. I didn't come for these other characters. The main character in the novel doesn't cast a lot of spells, so just super surprised. Like eventually he kind of, it, it kind of becomes a matter of like him conserving necromatic energy versus him needing to use it for survival. But a lot of that doesn't come out until like mid story and later on. Um, so the first half is just focuses on like survival stuff and like the caravan stuff. Um, and there's just like this point of view shift between the main character and the slavers that captured him and all these other people that just, it, like I said, it just felt, kind of confusing and till about middle to like the middle of the story i was just kind of bored with it because the the survival aspects are okay they just weren't really that particularly interesting for me um there's no real action in this novel um besides like the few places where the main character kind of comes into contact with those slavers um and the the honest the bear thing was like just really out of left field. I feel like somebody was that novel, the, that, that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, um, the Revenant. It felt like somebody was watching the Revenant while they wrote the first draft of this novel or something. And they brought in this like bear that was kind of hunting the main character that I thought was just kind of a weird aspect, especially in the middle of a, like a, a huge desert with that. I'm not sure where the bear belongs there, but still, um, it is an aspect of the surrounding and you actually get to see the bear's point of view, which is also weird. Uh, or at least like not super entertaining for me. Um, 
the action picks up a little bit after that, after that half of the stuff that at no point in the show, I should say. Um, but again, there's just so many other point of views that you're like, Oh, I, I was looking forward to reading a story about the main character and not all these other people overall. Um, the story isn't poorly written or anything. It's not, um, there's nice character development for these secondary characters and a couple of good action scenes. But overall, I, I felt like the story was only minorly about the necromancer that I came to read about. And overall, I was just kind of bored with the story. Um, so for me, it gets a score of five out of 10. That's rise of the necromancer, a little bit easier to the score of five out of 10. I really like the first two books much more. And next up is going to be blossoming online dragon hack written by Andrew Sipple. Sipple. It is 379 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. I'm sorry. It is not available on Kindle. That's a really big distinction. Uh, a lot of Andrew Simple stuff does not appear on Kindle Unlimited um, because he publishes it wide or publishes it places. So just be aware of that. Um, here's the author's description. Richard Royal has a hard life. He lives in a corrupt church-controlled dystopia. His family is soon broken, and the only joy to be had comes from the escapism of full immersion gaming. Introduced to a new and very illegal game, he finds himself in the body of a dragon on a quest to find a dark and evil power to serve. But the game is more than it seems, and the dragon is more than a beast. Soon Rich's life is far, far more complicated than he ever expected, and the threats against him grow both in-game and in real space. There is no path that will not lead to blasphemy, and the dark secrets revealed will change two worlds before it's all done. In the Little Beach Saga, send the Threadbear's world of Generica online. Okay, there we go. Um, this is another story sent in the Threadbear universe, the first one in the ser series of Threadbear uh, series, then it's a small medium, and then this one. So these are also in the same universe, but they're told from kind of different point of views. Um, this one in particular is told from the player perspective, like people from, I don't want to say our world, obviously, but like um, either a future dystopian world or a parallel universe dystopian world. Um, it's told from a player from that kind of world. And if you've read those other series, you're actually going to be able to appreciate it a lot more quickly that uh, the shared game mechanics between them all, especially if you've read some of the player um, rules from the small medium series, you're going to see a bunch of those pop up and, and it, things are very consistent, which I was a big fan of. Um, and, but if you haven't read those, don't worry. This, this works as a standalone series. It does a really good job of explaining the game mechanics and the, 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 the player mechanics specifically. Um, this story, however, is a lot darker than anything I think I've read from the author. And, I like that. I actually, I was really interested in the world where it's setting, even though it was, it's like super dystopian and it's like this, it's this really not great place for the main character to live in. And I was like, Oh, it's many parts of that, that first section of the story where it's like this, um, character development and description of the world. And like why the main character wanted to do is that escape him into this, in this game world. Um, the things that describe them was like, wow, dude, you got, wow, your life sucks. I, I would not want to live in that universe in that particular world. Um, it, it's so harsh that the author actually has several disclaimers and then I'm saying that he's not poking fun at any religion or any real like group or political group, um, that it's a fictional world. And, and it, that kind of describes how this beginning section can be perceived as, 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 as controversial to degree. Uh, to me, it was an interesting way of looking at a potential parallel universe in a world, um, and I, I, I like that kind of interesting thought processes, but I can see, definitely see how some people might be, um, I don't want to say offended, but, you know, um, think that they're being made fun of, I guess. Um, but still, it was a very, it's a very interesting real world setting. Um, once in the game world, however, I should say, um, the beginning of the novel is kind of a slow burn. Um, the main character is in the game by the 11% mark, but like in the beginning section is a lot of character development. stuff. So, so just be aware of that. Um, the ones in the game world, the system used and like the, the, the character described in the character creation section are going to feel a little familiar. Hopefully if you've read the threadbare, the small medium series, it actually expands many of the RPG elements, giving you more notifications, more class and race abilities and player only aspects you wouldn't have necessarily seen before. I actually thought it was really nicely well thought out and the way that everything's explained to the main character comes through really clearly and it, it very naturally. I was actually quite impressed. Like in, when I was reading, I was like, oh, this is this is exactly how players would explain, play, explain game mechanics to other players who didn't necessarily go through the tutorial or read the game manual. So I thought that was really nicely done. Um, there are several aspects of the story 
um, of how the main character spoils the game world um, that I actually enjoyed. I actually thought, I don't want to just like spoil things for you guys, but um, there, there's a particular aspect of, of the novel involving his, his game character that I thought was really interestingly done as the main character towards the world and the game explores him. I thought that was fun. And I, that's all I'm going to say about that in particular, but it was, it was interesting. Um, a lot of the in-game stuff is very slice of life as the main character towards the world. And he looks for his, um, some kind of dark deity to fulfill his, his, um, his job class, um, stuff so he can level. Um, but a lot of it's really just slice of life and that's very well, um, it feels a lot like the stuff that you would have read in Threadbare or in Small Medium. Um, so if you like those novels, you're going to like that aspect of the story. Um, overall, I like this thing. I really did. Um, it's a bit, again, different and darker than the author's other works. So just be aware of that. Like generally, the real world is like, oh, this is this is not a nice place. I would not like to live here in any way, shape, or form. Um, but it does get more real, like good reason why this dystopian world is something that the main character doesn't want to be in. Um, so it definitely serves that purpose. Um, Still, overall, entertaining read for me. Gets a score of 7.5 out of 10. That's Blasphemy Online, Volume 1, Dragon Hack, with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And that's it, folks. We're done. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening, for hanging out with me today. Um, remember that you can listen to a Catch the Liberty Podcast on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. Go follow us on all those different places so you can get the latest Little RPG reviews and news and author interviews every single week um, because you like the same stuff I do. Hopefully, you like the, the genre. Um, I do this because I love you guys and I love the genre. It's a, it's a passion for me to continue to do, um, even though I had, I should be writing novels and I should be taking care of family stuff. I'm, I'm here doing this video because um, I love you guys and I love this genre. That is a great place in my heart. So thanks for hanging out with me, folks. Uh, remember, if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, folks. Remember, until we can hang out again to go read some lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody.